I've gotten some requests on how to make a scroll bar for your dashboard, or in this case, I have it hooked up to uh, my map. Um, this is a color-coded map, um, dynamic. And if you haven't seen uh, my other videos on how to create this type of map, uh, I'll put a link to those in the video notes. Um, but how do you make a scroll bar? What I like about the scroll bar is that you have much larger range of values and smaller increments versus, say, a selector box where, you know, in this case, I've got this set from 0 to 200. You can, of course, do it much higher than that. But for a selector box, you'd have to have all of those values in here, and the person would have to click on each individual one. And so how do you um, integrate this into your map? And then also, can we somehow make this also adjust the color coding? Right now, it's only set to change the proportions. And so in this case, um, you know, Texas uh, will remain one of the highest values because we're changing the values of all everything proportionally. But what if we want to add some sort of multiplier in here that actually does uh, change the proportions and therefore uh, the color coding? So here's my map of South America, and you can see it's, it's all set to go as far as the color coding is concerned. But now let's add uh, a scroll bar that will change these values as well. And really the sky is the limit on how you want uh, it to change the values and the purposes for that. Um, but the first thing you need to do is click on the Developer tab towards the top right-hand side. And every version of Excel should have these options. So um, everything I do in this video, um, you should be able to do in pretty much any version. The first thing you want to do is click on Design Mode. And then Insert. And then under ActiveX Controls, you don't want the Form Controls version, you want the ActiveX Controls version. Click on Scroll Bar. Okay, and then you can draw this really anywhere because you can move it and resize it as, as you want. But let's put it right down here. Okay, and then now let's change um, some uh, attributes for this. Uh, so right click, properties. And the first thing let's do is change the shading of this. Um, the way it's set now it kind of blends in with everything else. And so you want to click on the back color item. And by the way, don't be intimidated with all these options. Uh, most of these you probably will never use. Uh, and we're only going to use a handful today. So click on the drop down here. And you have some default colors. And then you also can choose a palette as well. But the one I like the most is this active title bar. And this four color really only changes the shading of those little arrows at either side. And so I don't usually mess with those too much. I, I think black usually works. <clears throat> now let's uh, change the range. And so currently it's set from zero. You see the minimum zero to the max of 32,000. But let's make it from zero to uh, 200. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is tell it where to place the value from the scroll bar because in our background data it needs to know what value you, you've chosen from the select from the scroll bar um, and so let's tell it to put the value in this box here which is p p10 okay and so where it says linked cell just type in p10 and then enter then you can close that. Now to activate the scroll bar, you have to actually click on Developer and then uncheck the Design Mode option. And so as you can see, we're scrolling it and then it's updating this value here from 0 to 200. <clears throat> okay. Now let's add a title to the scroll bar. So Insert text box. Let's draw it right here. And you can format this however you'd like. OK. 
Okay. Now, um, so you'll see this says 200, but we are wanting to change these values by percentage points, not by just whole numbers, right? And so we need to convert this 200 to a percentage. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that number in here. And so we can make a formula equals this number divided by 100. And so you see it converts it to 200%. Now, if it's not automatically set to percentage, you can right-click Format Cells and then just make sure the percentage, and then you can change the decimals if you want to. Okay, and now, um, once your dashboard is ready for the end user, they will not see all this background data. At least most of the time, that's not how you want it set up. So you need to place whatever value, when they're scrolling, um, you need to place the value somewhere here they can see it. So we're going to do that by adding another text box. And we'll just place it oops, under here is fine. And I don't like any outline, just like the number. Do that. Let's format it a little bit. Okay, now, text boxes, you can't enter formulas in directly. Now, we want it to capture Q10. So if I just enter Q10, push Enter, you see it doesn't do anything. For text boxes, you have to enter the formula in the formula bar at the top here. So equals Q10. Okay, we'll just reposition this a little bit. Okay. And so now it's changing or it shows you the number, the value that you're selecting. Okay. <clears throat> now we need this, um, this value to somehow be linked to the metrics uh, column in this case that actually control um, these values here. And you can see as we're doing scrollings back and forth, it's not doing anything for the map just yet. But let's do that. And you can do this one of two ways. The first way would be, and this is how I had it set up in this map, do it where it changes the proportion of all the values, right? Um, and that's fine. That's what you're looking for. Or you can tell it to only change the values of certain line items, and in which case we can also tell it to trigger the color coding uh, 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 effect as well. So let's do that. So in this case, let's tell it to only um, update this value. And we'll just put a little one here so we know which one. And we'll click uh, Columbia, Paraguay, Uruguay. And so these ones to our don't mean anything other than just to remind us which ones we want to update, right? And so whatever value this is, it's going to be multiplied by whatever selector box we've chosen. And OK. So, what we have to do is take these values, and we're going to change the formula. So currently it's set to capture the values from one of these three columns based on this selector box. But we need to change it for these. So let's copy the formulas over to here, just for these. We only need it for these, the ones that we're actually going to change. Okay, and so now we're going to change the formula for just these four boxes to equals this value times our box here, right? The percentage. And we're just going to copy that and paste it. And what I forgot to do, and so you'll notice here, I didn't lock in Q10. And so as I, as I paste this format elsewhere, it's going to move this reference. And so you need to click on F4. You'll see the dollar signs. That, that way it's locked in. So no matter where you copy and paste this formula, Q10 will always be the reference point. So let's try that again. OK, so now as we're changing the scroll bar, you see it's only changing the values for these four line items. Okay. But you'll notice, even though it's changing the values up here, it's not changing the color coding. And we, so we need to actually assign 
the same macro that's assigned to this selector box to uh, the scroll bar. And so how we can do that is, first thing we need to do is click on macros. And so what I want is I want to copy this here. So you want to copy the name of whatever um, the macro is. In this case, it's the def color codes. And so just copy that. And then developer design mode. Double click on the scroll bar. And then, so it's already got this embedded, but normally this is what you would see. This is all you would see when you double click on that scroll bar. And so what we're going to do is tell it every time, and it says private sub scroll bar change. So every time the scroll bar is changed, the value is changed, you're going to tell it you want to call and then paste in the name of death color codes. Okay, so every time that you change the scroll bar, it's going to call the macro that's called death color codes. And this will, in this case, it's whatever macro you have that you want to assign it. But for the heat map, this is what I use as my reference. And then you want to save that, close it. Okay, so if all goes as well, oh, the developer, and then uncheck the design mode to, to activate the scroll bar. And so hopefully this works. As we're scrolling this and we let go, you see it changes the color coding. Okay. And of course we can make this even more drastic. So let's um, go back to developer, design mode, right click, properties. Now let's change this max value to 1000 instead. Okay, so we change this to 1000. Now you see it really, you can really see the effects. And so every time you change this value and you let go of the mouse, it will automatically rerun that macro for the, the, the shading. And of course you can use this in a myriad of ways and you can even integrate uh, multiple scroll bars. So you can have one that changes everything proportionally. You can have one that only changes the values for certain um, line items. Um, you know, really the sky is the limit. But I've been using this a lot more uh, with my dashboarding. Um, and I'm getting some positive feedback on it. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, I would appreciate if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. And uh, thanks for watching.